Okay, this is a video I never thought I would record, partially because I thought maybe I wouldn't get to this point in my life and my journey. Yeah, I guess I'll just flat out come out and say it. Let's zoom out a little bit more. All right, now you can see. Now you can see the fit. All right, this is a video I never thought I would record because one, embarrassment. Two, I never, I, I thought it would affect the way people see me. Three, it just, this feels like a private topic. This feels like a really private topic that I actually think a lot of people go through, but maybe they just don't want to share it because it is just like vulnerable. I want to tell you this secret, whatever. I want to tell you this story because I think this is a common thing. I think this is something that I know that I was able to get over and that a lot of people get over. And whenever I have conversations with people, I feel comfortable just like bringing this up. And I think we all have had our struggles with substance abuse. I personally uh, was addicted to weed, to marijuana, from I think 18 to 24 years old. I want to take you through my journey of how I quit, what my relationship was like with that substance, and what quitting did for me. And um, yeah, I wrote some notes. I wrote some notes. I'm being like, I'm brushing this off in a funny manner because I feel like this is just something that like nerve wracks me a little bit. So I smoked from 18 to 24. I got introduced to weed by my first partner who was a pretty heavy smoker. And so it just kind of became a routine to smoke when we hung out. And I remember thinking it was fun. And I remember thinking, oh my God, like he's super addicted. Like he would just take bong rips all the time. And I, and I just kind of thought, oh, that's like crazy that someone would smoke that much weed. And then, I remember I just like didn't try drugs until 18 years, like weed until 18 years old, just because I remember thinking I don't want it to interfere with school, which I mean, thank God I, because I don't know if I would have graduated high school, honestly, if I had been abusing the way that I was abusing when I really got into it. I'll tell you this straight off the bat. This isn't like, a, oh, I like smoking a J every now and again. No, like I was smoking between, I was I was probably smoking an eighth a day, like to put in, that into perspective, that's about 3.5 grams of weed every day. And on Sundays I would smoke up to a quarter. Like I would smoke a quarter of an ounce. Like I would smoke six grams of weed a day. Honey, oh my God. I was like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> It's kind of funny looking back on it now just because it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's a funny little habit to have. Then I remember he would, you know, we would order food or we would like, we would get food and I remember we'd always get stoned. Like he would offer me weed because he was gonna get high before eating. So I would get high before eating and I remember we had a conversation where he's like, you're just an enhancement smoker. Like you just, you know, you wanna watch a movie, you just wanna enhance it. You know, you wanna eat something, you just wanna enhance it. You're an enhancement smoker. And I remember with my high school friends, like on the weekends, like we would drink and I remember my boyfriend would like bring over like a small pen or like a joint and we would drink and have some weed and it was really fun and I just remember getting like, I just remember thinking it was really fun. And then I remember thinking to myself, ooh, like I have a seven o'clock itch where I, I was 18 at the time and I remember thinking, oh, if I don't smoke by 7 p.m., I wanna smoke. Like it would, it would pop up in my head where I'm like, ooh, I haven't smoked yet today, I'd like to smoke. And I, you know, not to sell anyone out necessarily, but just like I had been around people that smoked weed in my life, so it didn't feel, it didn't feel like, um, it didn't feel like it was like this big thing. And I'd also seen really, really hard drugs. And I remember thinking, you know, I'll never ever do hard drugs, but weed is a, a substance that you can get addicted to. So I'm not gonna get addicted. It's just a fun, playful thing. So that was about 18. And later in life, like if you, ha if you haven't watched my channel, I have PCOS. I have higher testosterone than, than estrogen and what weed does, and this was something that I realized when I was quitting, what weed does is it suppresses, a, I, I found a study on this years back, so whether or not this is like still relevant, I don't know, but what I, what I read was that weed suppresses testosterone production for up to an hour. And so I remember 
And I guess it was also edgy. Like when I, you know, at about 23 years old, I moved out of my mom's house for the second time, millennial. And I, I don't know, I just, I was edgier. Like I was edgier if I didn't smoke. I think it definitely exacerbated any anxiety, any anger issues that I had. Like I, but I remember weed would calm down that hyper testosterone feeling of like feeling angry or feeling pent up or whatever. So yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of my history on how I got into smoking weed. And I kind of want to talk about why it was a crutch and I kind of just did, but it really helped my anxiety. Like if I, if I was ever feeling overwhelmed or if I just, I don't know if I just felt any level of discomfort, it was the first thing that I would reach for was I would just roll a joint. I was a huge joint smoker. That's And that's probably how I was able to smoke so much. I wasn't like, I just didn't want to, I didn't like bongs or anything like that. Like I really, I really actually still romanticize rolling a joint and smoking it. By the way, I've been sober since, I'll have wine every now and then, but I really don't like alcohol. It just gives me a headache and I don't do hard drugs, obviously. So I've been sober since December of 2000, December 11th, 2018 is the day that I quit. And so I just hit my two year anniversary and I don't see going back just because to be honest, I don't see going back because I know that I can't regulate it. Like I know that if I was to start smoking it, cause I quit and I've gone back to it a bunch of times. I know that if I started smoking again, you know, maybe for a couple weeks or maybe a month, I would be able to smoke you know, during the evenings, uh, once in a while, but then it would become every night. And then, you know, I would start to probably wake up in the morning and go, Oh, well, I don't have anything to do today. And so, you know, I'll just, I'll smoke a joint and I'll make breakfast. And then I would just be in a slump of like, again, smoking an eighth to a quarter a day, which was so expensive. Like it's so expensive. And I remember trying to not buy a lot of weed because I knew if I was going, I knew if I like, it's cheaper to buy an ounce of weed, right? Two, 28 grams, which would typically be $280, right? It would be cheaper for, for me to just get an ounce and get an ounce for like $150, right? That's how people flip weed and make money. But I didn't want to get out of control and smoke too much. So I would hit up my dealer every day or every other day for an eighth or a quarter, but it was the worst feeling. And if you, if you smoke now, and if you're addicted now, it is, you know, it's the worst feeling when you are running out of weed and you know, you might have like one joint left or a little bit left, just enough to like get you a little bit high and not being able to get your hands on weed or knowing that you're going to have to wait and your dealer's maybe not answering you. Now weed is legal, which, it's funny because I quit before weed was legalized in Canada where I live, but that was just, that itch was just terrible. And just to think, you know, oh, I have to spend my money. You know, I, I was not buying myself makeup or jewelry or things that I loved, or, you know, I was spending money on, on weed. And I just, that, like the amount that I spent on weed a month, I could have had a new wardrobe every month, you know, and for someone that likes shopping and doing creative things and having hobbies, like it just my money just went to that. It was, it wasn't productive. So that's one thing that I really like now that like, I know I'm like, Oh, like for the first year I was like, Oh, I would have spent this on weed, but now I'm going to spend this on something really nice for myself. So that's a really big perk of quitting. It's like you, you have, you feel like very wealthy all of a sudden because you, you spent a lot of money on your addictions. That was, that was a really positive thing. And I guess for me, the definition of an addiction is something that gets in the way of your everyday life. If I was smoking like Snoop Dogg and I had a career like Snoop Dogg, that would be totally, I think, chill. If I could maintain relationships with people, if I could maintain a job, if I could, you know, function and have good conversations with people, you know, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal, but we got in the way of everything. I mean, I would rather, I would rather, I would feel really sick from my hormonal condition and I would smoke instead of going into work because I didn't feel good but that was such a bad habit to get into, to lose work over trying to make myself feel better. Like people just typically push through. The addiction made it easier for me to justify calling in sick to work. It just got in the way. I would have preferred to stay home and smoke than hang out with friends. Like that's the truth. I would have preferred that. And I remember like wanting to go on vacations and wanting to visit people and wanting to travel. One, not having the money to do that, but two, 
it would be, where would I find the weed? You know, where would I, and would it be embarrassing for someone else to know how much I smoked? So that was really hard. And then I would hang out with people that smoked because then I could just be true to myself and I could just, you know, I wouldn't be hiding anything. So my crowd became a crowd of people who smoked and I had another boyfriend, this was in 2018, who was also a heavy smoker. And I don't think I would have dated that guy if I was even sober because he was, he had a lot of issues himself. And I will do another, sep I will do a separate video on it because he was um, an athlete and um, that story is fucked. Like that story is, the things that I went through with that dude and like the story with that dude is crazy. So if you guys want a story time on that, I will do a story, like comment down below because that's, uh, that was crazy. So yeah, we would smoke a lot collectively together too. So I just, I, you know, I made decisions, even career decisions that I wouldn't have made if I was sober. Like we really it takes away your inhibitions as much as people say it doesn't like change you or switch you up. Oh my God. They're so wrong. It's just, it's just like alcohol. It's no, nobody. I don't believe anyone. I don't know. Maybe it works for some people. It really didn't work for me. It was a huge addiction. So, oh, another thing that I remember that was terrible, and it's funny because I'm two years away from that now, so I almost don't remember that phase, but... So today's Saturday, March 31st of 2018. I started to smoke here to kind of feel settled, and then my smoking made me feel sick almost, so I kept, like... It's this weird barrier that you break when normally you feel ill from smoking or drinking or any substance and then you start to use that substance and then that substance is the only thing that makes you feel normal and makes you feel healthy and good and like you've nourished your body even though your body needs like food, water and exercise but like in your mind, your, your addict mind, it's you need that drug to feel right. So it started to be that way for me. I've literally been hiding. I gave up on myself and just I keep abusing my body. It's affecting my mental health. Like, I think that's ultimately, like, you smoke weed, you eat shitty food. That affects your PCOS. That affects your mental health. Like, I, I need to get sober and not eat bullshit. And I'm just not sure how at this point. And, like, all I want to do is just smoke and escape more. And I never thought I'd be back in this spot where the idea of kicking it and cutting it actually, like, is a scary thing again. Like, I, you know, to go a week without smoking to me is like crazy. Like I couldn't imagine going a day without it. I would not be able to eat without smoking and I wouldn't be able to sleep without smoking. And not being able to eat without smoking was really challenging because I remember working at MAC as a makeup artist at the time and I couldn't eat all day because I just wouldn't, I'd feel sick but I never felt hungry. So I'd be at work feeling like shit, feeling like a zombie, and then I'd get home and I would smoke a joint after like probably 12, 8 to 12 hours on my feet, working, being active, and having had maybe like 300 calories that day. And then I would smoke at night. Then I would be able to eat and it would hit me how hungry I was. And I'd probably, I would at that time order in an extra large pizza, I'd eat the whole thing, and I'd get my daily calories then. But I couldn't eat without it. I just, I just didn't feel good not eating right and not eating well. Sounds like someone's shoveling outside of our place right now. So that is that background noise. How did I quit when I quit? Hi. Quitting was interesting because I had multiple calls with quitting. I got to a point where again, 18 to 24, so that's six years of doing something and six years of getting to a place where it was actually, it was, it was six years of getting to a place where it was actually really, I was getting frustrated and I was getting annoyed with my relationship with the substance. So I just, I remember the last day that I smoked, I was out at, at a friend's coffee shop and I came home and I rolled a joint and I remember the filter, like I would always take from, um, make filters from like magazine papers and stuff. It was weird. It was aesthetic, but it was strange. So I rolled up a magazine filter and it said sex on it. It was funny. And I smoked that joint and the whole joint. And I remember, which I did a lot. And I remember feeling like, oh, I'm not even high. I don't feel high. I don't feel anything. This is just my normal. I felt like that for a long time with my relationship with it. And so I just was like, I'm not going to smoke again tonight. And then I was, I watched actually a video. I watched YouTube videos of people talking about quitting. 
And what really stuck with me was someone saying, it just didn't serve me and my purpose. And I felt like I had such a great purpose and so many things that I wanted to do and so much creativity, which we did help, but then the follow through never happened. So as creative and inventive as I would be, you know, I never actually ended up making any things that I wanted to make. And I just saw people talking about it and I was like, man, I'm really not realizing my full potential. I'm not successful in any of the realms that I would want to be successful in. And um, yeah, so I just decided I'm, I'm finished. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm not going to say I'm done forever. I'm not going to jinx it. Like very much the AA mentality of I'm just not smoking today. You know, I started to, it was an interesting thing because I had the most vivid dreams. Like I remember I went to Florida, um, I'll link the video up here actually. I went to Florida in 2019 and I just, I had the most intense, horrifying dreams, the things that I, from my life that I hadn't processed, things from my childhood that I hadn't processed, just emotions that I deeply buried during that six years. Six years of things happening that I didn't have a chance to process emotionally because I was so high and because I was constantly running from those things. So um, quitting was never a point where I was like, oh, I want to go back. But it was definitely, you know, a journey of, of, of processing a lot of what had happened in my life. And that if you're thinking of quitting, I mean, that is something for you. That's something for you to prepare yourself for. Not necessarily, I'm not saying like prepare yourself. It's going to be terrible. But like, you know, it was that something that I was mindful of. And I allowed myself to feel those things. And I wrote a lot of poetry about my dreams and you know the things that were happening and it was just a way of processing and I found that very healthy and very soothing and I was like you know finally feeling comfortable that itch started to go away like I noticed oh I can I can eat now and I remember I ate a lot of junk food when I first quit because I didn't feel like eating obviously after I quit my hormones did do a jump like if you have PCOS and you're quitting my hormones went crazy when I stopped smoking my body was so used to it for so long but I think I'm finally kind of a bit more like I'm a bit more balanced but it was the best it like truly when I say this like my life in the past two years I feel alive I feel clear I feel in touch with myself I know what my goals are I can follow through on things I'm a consistent person nothing comes in the way of me following through for people my friends will call me and I'm not too high and you know, like I remember I'd be too high to talk to people and to pick up the phone and to be available. I would already get high during the day and then and then I wouldn't feel like I couldn't go out with my friends at night because I was just too like fucked up and um, I would try to nap it off but then I just felt groggy. Like I didn't feel like socialized the same way. I don't feel like I'm hiding any dirty secret anymore, which is such a relief to me. And since then I have my business, like I'm a makeup artist, my business has gotten so good. I've accomplished so many things. I'm in school again, like I am doing things that are really true to my journey and my path. And I'm very proud of myself. It's been a really huge source of pride for me to, to know that I could overcome something like that and that I'm strong and I don't need a crutch and you know, I can, I can work through things and I don't need to, I'm not a slave to myself anymore and to my addiction anymore. So it's been, it's been great. Like honestly, like quitting, I just, I have so much pride in myself now having quit. It is, it is a really big accomplishment and it's a big accomplishment even thinking about wanting to quit and taking the time to sit down and watch a video like this and processing it. But regardless of why you're watching this, I mean, this is, yeah, this was something I carried a lot of shame with. I felt very guilty. I was worried I would make the video and then I would have a relapse and, you know, I'd be ashamed. But it's been two years. I'm in a place now where I'm confident and I know that I, you know, I'll roll joints. I'll go to my mom's place. I'll roll joints for, for Calvin, for my mom, anyone who, you know, wants a joint. I'll roll it. I can taste it. I can smell the weed. I still smell weed and I think, hmm, that smells so good. I still have really good positive associations, but there's never a point where I would think about going back, ever. Like, at this point, I just, I have too many things to do. And, I, and I'm too proud of myself for quitting to go back. I feel good, and I hope that 
this video, you know, me being vulnerable, because I think every time I'm vulnerable, it, it helps someone. As embarrassed as I am about having uh, dealt with this, I am proud that I got through it. And so I hope that this helped you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and sitting down with me. If you want to have a dialogue in the comment section, obviously, I love that. And um, please do, if this video helped you, or whatever reason, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I really want to make YouTube a full-time job for myself. And I think this was a part of my journey that I kind of left out of the equation. So I actually feel quite relieved sharing this with you. I hope this vulnerable video helped. Yeah, everything works out. Everything's a lesson. No, no time is ever, is ever wasted. And that's the truth.